Welcome to the official AFL Fantasy Podcast with the Traders. G'day, we're the Traders, thanks to Sportsbet. I'm Warney, coach of the Warn Dogs, and this is Calvin. Coach of Calvin Eatall. Took all of my being to be here today. Yeah, well, I could imagine the results so. of the weekend. Uh, Roy's not here at the moment, so it is just Calvin and I, which... <clears throat> It's probably two people you don't want to be listening to no. at the moment because I don't want to be around I've got, you at the moment. I've got plenty of things that I want to say today on this podcast, Warn Dog. Keep it PG. I definitely will. <laughs> I, I am ready to go. Right. Well, let's get into it. We might skip over the scores for the week. We are not skipping over the scores for the week. Start with you, once again, the bottom scorer. It, it's just ordinary. You're supposed to get better over the buys. And I basically, I, I won't call it planned for them, No, I did plan for them. (laughs) They just haven't executed. (laughs) 18-14 for the Warned Dogs this week. Which saw me slip slightly. So it wasn't that awful, but for a 14K ranked coach, it wasn't that awful. But yeah, I slipped slightly to 14,829th overall. Not good. No, it's not good. Um, Because. because Why? Roy Roy was the second. Uh, Highest scorer. 1903. 1903. So he's just outside the 1300 club. Yep. Give or take. But it was I. It was I, Warn Dog, who stole the show once again with a. I thought I was going to win the week. I thought I was going to win the week there for a while. I scored 1955. After the GWS game, I had five of the top six scorers, and my mate Finn Cow was getting it done. I was like, here we go. Yeah. Two cows are better than one. He was dominating. I ended up coming about 2,000 for the week. Yes. And the greatest thing in the world has happened, Warren. Do you want to share it with everybody? No. You, I can edit this out because this you, is You, Warren Dog, are now the worst ranked trader. <laughs> well, it's nice that there's a first time for everybody. No, it, it doesn't. I have. I thought it would have taken me... I think I said it maybe two or three weeks ago. You know, you know, in a four or five weeks' time, I will have caught you. I didn't know it would have been this quick. The amount of the, abuse. The telling will be after this week. No, but I'm not confident at all. I've got the text messages you used to send me, and people don't know this, obviously, because. But now it's time for it to come out. He used to send me messages, right, and say, <laughs> "Cow, is a lie. no, it's not." He used to go, "Cow, this has got only a little bit of truth." You, to it. you are wrecking <laughs> the brand. Can you please? That's a lie. No, he did. He says it all the time. I didn't say wrecking. I you're said wrecking you are our, destroying the brand. <laughs> you're destroying our brand. Can you please make your team better? And I was like, "Hey, one day, dog, these words will come back and get you." It's and taken here we are. Twenty years. We are sitting here today. Sitting here today. I'm not giving up, though. I'm not giving up hope that I will still defeat you. Your team end. is a dog's breakfast. It is. It's rubbish. And I, and I actually have some sympathy for people now. <laughs> with you don't show how it. stuff can go bad. You don't and that show has. it. Well, you need to be nice to people all the time like I am. Not just kick people how about, when they're down. How about you're nice to people with giving them some decent captain selection? Do you want to talk about that now? We can. Right. You have access to the greatest captain picker here in Australia. Number four. No, (laughs) please. My top five averaged 131. There's probably people out there that are doing better than you that you don't even hear about. My top five averaged 131 on the weekend. Okay. What did your number one score? I said to you. What did your number one score? uh, He he was okay. He scored a ton. He scored a ton. Just. That's a ton to ton. Didn't the Nuffy get me? Yep. (sighs) So that's another conversation. We'll for talk about day. that. The sports bet Nuffy on Thursday night. Now, here's the thing, Making dog. A judge. If you did what I told you to do, instead you go you go rogue. It's like it's How like I'm going rogue because you you don't do what I say. You, you're in an area where you, what you don't understand. You don't understand captains. It's like me walking in NASA, right, and getting in a rocket ship <laughs> and expecting to know how to fly. I wouldn't know. So what would I do? I'd ask people questions. I'd go to the experts at NASA, NASA and say, hey, excuse me, I'd like to fly your rocket ship. Can you please help me? And they, and they would they, just turn you away. And they would tell me. You, <laughs> do I tell you, test. I said, no. Vice Captain Taranto and roll it into English. Did I not tell you to do that? Okay, and I, I am able to look at stats as well. Do you know there's only two rucks that have scored 100 against Goldie in North Melbourne this year? Calvin's captains, mate. What did I tell you to do? 
Vice Captain Taranto, roll it into English. That's what I was going to do. Both great. I said to Roy, Roy, Vice Captain Taranto, roll it into Bond and Pelly. What did he do? You guys just don't listen. Dunkley should have had a bigger score. I can't. <laughs> should have, could have, would have. Who cares? I can't do any more than what I'm doing here. You still had... This is all irrelevant because you still had Marshall as your number one pick. That's more than that. It's more complicated than that. And that's why well, you're in an but area... that's what the stats say. But you're in the an stats area... The say, Calvinator, when those nuffies are out there making their uh, lists of going, who's the best captain picker in this nation, which is not you... The two S's. Safety ceiling. <laughs> Just remember that. You're in NASA at the moment, wandering around, trying to fly a spaceship, and you've got no idea what to do. You would be walking around NASA with a helmet on, <laughs> bumping into bloody craft and setting off bloody alarms and shit like that. All I'm saying is, there's more to it than what you understand. And I understand that you don't get it. That's fine. You don't need to. But I spend hours. 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 Working over this. I still notice that you don't have your four-colour pen yet. <laughs> I still got me black pen. I oh, know, that's a problem. Oh, spill up! Give up it was the most disgraceful display I've ever seen. Get me to because it's just not acceptable! We'll start with a bit of negativity, which well, what, basically... It's all it's been so far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I had 19 players this week. Thursday night footy comes around. Tom Stewart knocks oh, out a 66. I know. I'm going, oh. Right, at least it won't count. That'll be my 19th man. Uh, no, it wasn't. I had a couple more. I had a couple of 30s oh, no. to go after that. So I actually had a 30 that counted. But Tom Stewart cops it, 66. He was the guy that we were very happy to go. He's almost... Well, he was yeah. the best pick of the defenders, we said. I already had him. You already had him. Yep. Most people probably already had him. Yep. But when it came down to him versus Sinclair, for example, I think we all went with Tom Stewart. However... A lot of that was about going the GMHBA games coming up. Yeah. He was in Adelaide against Port Adelaide, so we'll yeah. give him a little bit of a, a pass there, but not for a negative three for this week. No. So no, no, no. anyway, so he's actually got he's back at GMHBA on Thursday night. That's the Thursday game. Right, could be a big one. <laughs> could be. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, I'm going to give my negative three here, dog two. Row. Matt Row. Yeah, but not like row like. Meow. Just, <laughs> what is he doing out there? Yeah, not taking a lot of marks. No, That's he just either, fiddles around. He scored an 80, which was probably overs of what he was tracking for there for a yeah. long time. A few of the Suns were like that, actually, in that game. Oh, Ratkins? Right, he had 14 at the half. Yeah. So, 50 point second half, yep. you go, oh, that's good. Yep. But, mm. he's, how many more rounds are we going to see the Rat? Because that's yes. going to be a problem. It's not going to be far away. This week could be very tough. Here it is! If that's what you did, Jenny, you stuck it right up them! All right, you keep going, cow. Where were you kissed this week? Hey, I wasn't kissed. <coughs> Finn Callahan. That's kissed on the Callahan. Just had his highest score for the, for the year. <laughs> I reckon the highest score ever. 108. That's what I'm talking about, Finn Cow. Now, Roy sat here last week and he said, Finn Cow will get you a ton this week. Cow, and you'll be, um, you'll find it hard to part ways with him because he's obviously on the buy this week. Um, no, I don't. Yeah, I don't to. find it hard to part ways with him. He's just not worth anything either. Mm. So, yeah, one hundred eight though. Well done. Oh, a little honourable mention there as well to Windhager. Oh, you didn't like him last week. I, like, I picked him. I like Windhager. You were yeah. uh, Windy King eighty five. He's a good player as a counter. He had their most centre bounces too. Yeah, right. Oh, well, role is obviously a big reason for it, but. Um, yeah. And he did go to Taranto. And he tackles. In oh, that in last, last quarter. quarter. Yeah. <laughs> go to him. What does that mean? Well, when Still it got... Still let Taranto kick it off the ground and do what he wanted with it. Well, when it got wet, yeah. Taranto just came into his own. That's it. Like, it's... That's his superhero. He nearly had a 100-point last qu- um, half, didn't he? Yep. Unbelievable. To it. Uh, I'm going to give mine to Harry Sheasel because you shouldn't have traded him out, V8. So you're giving your plus three to someone who didn't even turn up. Oh, your team is struggling. <laughs> oh, a couple goodness. of tons. And that's actually my problem. My tons were just little tons. Mm. No, didn't get any big ones. Uh, what we did miss out on, though, is... Well, you didn't. No wonder you scored well. Tim Tarando was your skipper. Uh, he because was my, you followed the plan. He was my vice captain, like I told everybody to do. I just, I just can't do everything for everyone. It's a hard job. Why didn't you have rank Bont ahead of him? Uh, he was... Oh, he was third, actually. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, Bont was a uh, Bont was awesome. 
pretty happy with yourself. I am. Do you know everyone else though? All your all your nemesises. I don't have nemesises. You do. Who? Oh, the other captain pickers. The other captain pickers. <laughs> oh, please. You just... They didn't have Marshu up there. They had uh, Bont and Taranto. Okay. You just don't get to go, now I'm a captain picker, right? They think Show they me your degree. <laughs> <laughs> Show me yours. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, what would that look you like? You don't get to just all of a sudden go, you know what now? I'm a brain, uh, a brain surgeon. I was going to say a brain doctor. That would have gone real. I'm a brain surgeon, so now I get to operate on brains. No. You've got to actually put in work before you can be a captain picker. So I'm just saying, all those people out there making your list, keep making them, but you're not qualified. Uh, 21.30 was the <laughs> top scorer of the week. Two blokes did that there. Two Ryans. No way. Different surnames. Um, one of them was called Round 14 Winner's Baby. Set it up to try and oh, win Oh, well one. done. So they were there. Um, the one that actually gets it is um, that one, Ryan D, with the round 14 winners, baby, because highest round score was a 24-47. That's ahead of uh, QWERTY. How do you one. feel about that, dog? The fact that he's just gone, you know what, round 14 is going to be my round. Yeah. I love good. it. Well done. Maybe, maybe that's a strategy that I should employ. Yeah. He's actually scored a 2,400 as well, though, this Just year. Just smacked so it. I haven't gone anywhere near that. Oh, well done, son. Um, and Fleabags is still sitting on top. Dr. Drill's in second. But Matt Mottram moved up into fourth. No, so he know. didn't. I think he was fourth, was he? I yeah, can't I think remember. he was. Anyway, the gap's closing, though. What so did Matt score? Matt scored a 1,949. Not much more than you. Oh, no, you scored <laughs> more than Matt. Keep up, Matt. Keep up if you can, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> You're a peanut. <laughs> Uh, right, that's where those uh, top scorers are. So you can check those out by clicking on the rankings and see where you go. The true test will be after this week. Though, oh yeah, to see where they uh, fall out. So where do you where are you going to come out of these buys as far as your rookies and and that go? Ah, oh, not great. Yeah, I'll still have. Possibly three on field, but I've improved all of those, uh, all of them, yep. some of those mid prices. Yeah. So I was probably four rookies yep. pre buys, but I've been turning my warples into nils. Yep. I've been turning, yep. um, yeah, just that's what the plan has been. So at the moment when we come out, I will still have on my field Ratkins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's still there for me. And he then goes next week, though. Obviously. And then two of either like a Wardlaw, a Matt Johnson, or a Windhager. Right. So that's okay. But I think the other side, and this is probably one of my mistakes, maybe, is where I've got my team. I've got. I'll have a rotation policy. Oh. So okay. I'll be able to loop, basically. Okay. Some of those guys. Maybe I've got too many of those half decent rookies. Yep. Oh, well, you, your ranking's starting to reflect that, so you're doing well. Shut your cake up. <laughs> Round 14 votes for the Michael Barlow medal for the Cash Cow of the Year. Sheezer has done it. His 98-point game saw him gain the five votes and overtake Nick Dacos' as an epic performance last year. Now, the big question is whether you trade or not this week. Uh, Angus Sheldrick, it's amazing that he was able to score 82 with such limited time on ground. Um, he's been a great by play, gaining the four votes. Those couple of goals were very nice. Very nice. Deal will. My boy. Now, eight marks. He picked up the three votes yeah. for that. Um, he's only in 4% of teams, and he's added 357K. I reckon a lot of coaches have uh, almost slept on him a little yep. bit there. Bailey Humphrey, just 11 disposals for him. He gets the two votes. Uh, the win was his four marks and six tackles and that goal as well. 10 to 1 kick to handball ratio helps when you only get 11 disposals. And Will Ashcroft, finally, he gets the one vote. Uh, he just keeps ticking it over. A juicy run coming up should see some more votes to come. Uh, and as we look at the leaderboard, after a 14 round, Sheezel has a 25 point lead over Ashcroft. Massive. Here's the news of the week you need to know on the official AFL Fantasy Podcast. All right, news. What do we got? Let's start with almost going sequential order of the weekend. I've noticed how I've lost my job of providing the news notes. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Patrick Dangerfield, <laughs> what happened to him? Busted rib and lung. Yeah, he's had yeah. to drive back from Adelaide. And uh, so we're missing for a few weeks. I'm a critic of danger, but that was brutal. Mm. Poor bugger. 
Yep. So, uh, Tanner Braun, in that game, he hurt his shoulder, who was off to a flying start. Again. I think he had a 40-odd point first quarter or so it was. Um, Nick Haynes hurt his ankle on Saturday. So, that is interesting. They've got the bye this week, old uh, okay, GWS. Yep. Yep. So, it's hard to know, but we did see Himmelberg now. A couple of good weeks in the back line. Yep. That stays, and if Haynes' ankle yep. is no good, that helps him even more. Uh, Matt Johnson was subbed out with a corky, but also not very many points to his name. He was a 37-point game for him, so not good. Samson Ryan has an ankle issue. Now, Nasai Wanganeen Miller, who was one of Roy's picks from last week, and a few people jumped on and, and listened to Roy. Yeah. It, he hurt his ankle early. I think he was on a donut. He was. And was sitting on the pine for a while, but came back on and was massive. I feel like I'm going to say it was a 50-point half or something like that. His role is so good. Like, he yeah. just gets such easy ball, and they give it to him every single time. So he, yeah, ended up, got a little bit quieter as um, the game went on. I was just going to get this up because I wanted to see exactly what his um, his quarter stats were there. So he, yeah, so he went 21-37. So he had um, a very good he start it up. for the game, 58 points, but then a 5 and a 12 for the third and fourth quarter. There you go. All right. Uh, Ross Lyon, in that post-match presser. Now, Jack Steele, no good. You have got to be very frustrated if you are a oh. Jack Steele owner. So what did he end up with in the end? So he ended up with 60. 60. He had 21 touches. 16 of them were handballs. He mm. didn't take a mark, and he only had four tackles. Now, there was reported last week that he's dealing with a knee issue. Yes. And Ross Lyon pretty much is wondering, where'd that come from? He doesn't have it. Is that what he said? He's battling some uh, soreness and an Achilles problem. Oh. You have a look at him playing a game. He's got his knee strapped. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Ross. Go, you can't try to keep up to date, but Ross. But yes. Yeah, so there is something wrong. Now, the question with that is, could you trade him? Uh, he's got to go. He has. He's scoring like a rookie. In the buy rounds. <clears throat> he's, he's scoring like a rookie. Mm. Windhager had 25 more. Yeah. And attended more CBAs. Right. Uh, Joel Jeffrey hurt his ankle. Now, the Dogs lost some tall timber there with Lockie Jones and also Tim O'Brien, so that caused them to mix things up a little bit as well. Oh, that's unusual. MROs. Uh, Lockie Whitfield, he's copped a week for a dangerous tackle. Now, GWS are on the bye, so he's missing round 16. Yeah. You have to trade him, though, as well, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you do. Like, it's a weird one. It just it probably helps you. And your team this week by trading a round 15 by player yep. anyway. But I'll look at it as a, a bit of a blessing. Mm. Like, yeah, he can definitely go. Later today, we find out about <clears throat> old mate uh, Sick Dog as well. Oh, the dog's appeal. So, yeah. Oh, I know how that's going to go, dog. <laughs> yeah, not good. <laughs> not really? good for the dog. He's going to have to sit and shake and try to yep. uh, do everything he can for that. Now, Sam Wicks copped two weeks for striking. As well. So that's... Uh, that was uh, pretty silly. Yeah, it was. Well, it what was, are you doing, mate? Which helps Sheldrick stay inside, you reckon? Oh, okay. <laughs> about, uh, the Rick's good. What the about Rick the is other good. old mate? Um, what's his name that you were going to pick, but you didn't? Uh, which one? Bueller. Oh, Buller. Buller. <laughs> uh, he was your boy. You're the one no, who talked him up. You were the one that picked him last Thursday night on our video. Yeah, and then what did I do? I wrote my wrongs and I tweeted out oh, to everybody. Oh, you actually did. See, this is another issue I've got with you. <laughs> okay, go I for it. I have got inside your head. No, you, you haven't. You tried to, you try to think, oh, Warn Dog, you're deceiving people. Yoda, yoda, yoda. I'm the most open bloke. And then you've gone, oh, hang on. No. I am a deceptive cow. <laughs> that is not true. And you are now actually starting to let the public know what you're doing. If you were to put a poll out there, who's the nicer bloke out of you and me, it would be me. People like me more than you. Okay. Because you're just a grumpy People need to old... meet you. No. People have met me and they love me. They're like, oh, okay, cow. Love your captains, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why they don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> Far out. It's not that hard. You just make Tim Tarano your number one captain each week. Not this week, though, dog. Well, he could be. <laughs> if my VC's good, <laughs> Tim Taranto will be my captain hey, this, this week. Is, this is the week where people come up and knock on my door as they walk past my house and go, Calvin, we really need you this week. So I've started early today, dog, on my notes, and um, just sucks. I've only got one black pen. Mm. All right, let's get straight into the issues then. 
Well, oh, plowing through. This is a bit quicker than normal. We don't have that old mate. Oh, down. Roy just <laughs> waffles, doesn't he? <laughs> right, the issues this week. So it is the round 15 by, and this sees Carlton, GWS, North Melbourne, Port Adelaide, Richmond, and the Western Bulldogs, Bulldogs on that by. And they are popular players. Now, yes. mostly in the forward line. This is the thing. Yes. So 13 forwards are averaging 90 plus. Okay. 10 of them have the buy this week. <laughs> that is significant. That's a problem. We all knew that was there. Now, popular players, let's let's say the players that are in over 20% of teams there, Taranto, Sheasel, Rosie, English, Cogs, Green, Butters, and Bont. A couple of rookies in yep. um, the over 20% there in Wardlaw and Samson Ryan as well. But some big premium names there. How many of those premiums do you have then, V8, this week? Or before trades? Out of those guys yeah. there. Yeah, one... Two, three, four, five, five. Yep. And, and Roy's Roy's in a worse boat than that. Yep. Like he's nearly got them all. So and Roy's then got them all. He's got rid of and Walsh as well. Them. Yep. That's is that why he's not here. Yeah. He refused <laughs> exactly. to come. So, and that's where people are going to be in a bit of trouble. I think this this. So it's going to set up the week about what you do with your trading. This is the hard buy. The, yep. This was the hardest one out of all of it. But. It's a green light to probably trade premiums that we wouldn't have normally traded. Yeah, it is. And I and I don't feel good about that. No. Okay. Trading strategy. Yes, we still keep going with the get rid of a rookie on their buy or a mid-pricer on their buy. So for you, Cal, two easy ones, considering George Wardlaw only scored 31. He's easy to move, I think, isn't he? I think so. Especially yeah. now that I've got... So when I come He's out of the buys... He's got some cash on his head that you can... Yeah, when I came out, come out of the buys, Windhager was going to be on my bench. Yep. So he pumps so out. now he's on your field. Well, we beat Wardlaw by 50. Yeah. So I think that's an easy one for me. So Wardlaw can go. And then the other one for you is Finn Callahan, although he oh, gets you 100. I know. I've been but waiting like 14 <laughs> weeks for this moment. This is the question, though. Like, do you just stick with the plan? I do. And the other player with that might be Harry Sheasel, who almost had a ton, but he got a plus three for me uh, with his 98. But... The plan probably was, if you thought that he was in round one, that he would be in your team at round 15 and he's got the buy, yep. you would have thought that's a 95% chance you're trading there. You're 100%. You're getting, you will get in a better player, though. Will you? Yes. Although Not he, the way I'm trading. because I No, that's true. As good as player. he has been, you will find a better player. Mm. I will remind you, his scores have been good, but they haven't been... Premium good, like yeah, but have all the defenders done that though. But you could you could go down to uh, Himmelberg, who is significantly he's got a five in front of his name. Yeah, saves so much money, and their scoring output is going to be quite similar. Maybe not. Harry quite hasn't done as... everything we've wanted him to, even with that role. He's had a few nineties, so I'm looking here at um. At Sheasel. So he's gone at 84 in his last four. Yeah. So, well, oh, sorry, they're both Harrys. But Himmelberg hasn't done, really done what we've wanted him to. No. Like, a, the role is what we've been looking for. But have the scores been there like they were last year? He had a um, he had a game high 10, 10 marks, marks off yeah, the top of my head. Yeah. No, that's right. So he, the role is there. The scores will come. Like, he had an 84 on the weekend. I think he was boosted last year. He had that 160 game. Himmelberg. That, that, that helps. Yeah. So he had 19 touches, 10 marks. Like, yeah, it's a good stat line. So 84, I think he's going to be around that 80. 84 isn't a bad score. Either. Look, I think he's going to be around that 85 to 95 mark for the rest of the year. So if you can make, what, which, 100K, 200K? Which is how far is... Sheasel's not going over that. Hmm. So How much do you make out of Sheasel to win? Well, old Himmel... Let me have a quick look here. Himmelberg is 570. Yeah, and the shoes. 570. Okay, so you make about 180 grand out of that. Right. Which you're putting that on top of someone else is obviously a oh, very so good claim. And, and that is, you know, you could be doing that. Obviously, Himmelberg has his buy, so he wouldn't be doing it this way. Mm. But a guy like Sheasel, yes, he can go. So you mentioned other premiums that you could trade then is you're looking at guys like, well, Walsh. He can go. Two right, he can go. So an 80 from him on the weekend, and he just has not been the same guy. He hasn't, no. Since that start. Blues are better, though. They won. They were very good, actually. In Melbourne. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. To win that. Yeah, and, and they didn't even just win. They smacked them. Yeah. But I'm looking at Walsh here. 82, 91, 55. Yeah. So a high score of 91 in his last three. He might be cheap for us later on. He will be cheap. Mm. Another guy returns this week as well that is going to be very cheap. Callum Mills. By the name of Callum Mills. Would you go early on that? Oh, you could. 739K. Yeah, he could be under 700, though, the week after. Yes, he will. But I don't know. Oh, you could go. Who yes, have they got? Uh, so I'm not. I'm just having a look at his break even here, dog. So he's got a break even of 148. Yeah, if he has a ton, like he's dropping a bit, but he's not. Yeah, 148, and he's up against. Oh, oh dear. Who has he got? West Coast Eagles. Wow. So you could go early. You could go early. Too right, you can. So a bit of bit of DPP action there, dog. That's basically a straight swap, a shizzle mm. to a uh, to a Mills. That, when you put it that way... I know. Smart. Yep. Don't often put that with you. All right, so uh, oh, let's look geez. at players that you can be getting. Let's start with the forward line because I think that's where uh, most people have got their issues. Yep. That's where you've probably got the most players out of your side. Okay, let's start there. The value options, essentially. And I'm going to say Ben Keys at 675k. And Darcy Cameron at 691k. Now, Darcy Cameron has the ruck forward status yep. as well. So, they're probably those value plays that will be popular. I, I, am, I am very much eyeing off one of those guys. Mm. Maybe even two if I can. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, think, I think Keys is legit. Now, later on, we're going to have a chat to our boy, aren't we? Oh, Tom Duda. Yeah, yes. we're going to catch up with him well, shortly. We're going to hear him up about the old Ben Keys then because mm. that's something we need to know about. What he says could dictate what I do. Very much so because his last three week, not two days, Keys, <laughs> um, he's been in the guts. And when he's in the guts, he's averaging like 110, 115 points. So mm. when he's in there, it's, it's a no-brainer. 675K. Yep. And a lot of people have already jumped on that, which is good. One that I just wanted to throw out there was Taylor Adams at 624K. Yeah. And you can't trust it. No. But just wanted to flag it. 95-104. He's got a break even of 52. Um, yeah. He only had a 27 in round 10. That was yeah. from a game. Oh. <laughs> That's, yeah. But uh, he could be there. Now, Nick Martin's the form player. If you look he's at been him, very he's 116. Good. So he's coming off the buy there from the Bombers. Four tons in a row there for that. 16. He's so good. He's a machine. Good but player. But other than that... Yeah, other than that, like, it's pretty tough. Like, we weren't looking at any players last week yeah. in the forward line, yep. really, out of those guys. And that's... Um, yeah, it's it's light on. Because the premiums, as we mentioned before, 10 out of the top 13 scorers... Yep. ...that's uh, averaging over 90... Um, ...are from the round 15 by. All right, let's look then in defence. We'll go there. Yep. And probably the easiest two would be Jordan Dawson and Nick Dacos, I yep. would say, right at the top there. So Dawson at 958k. If you can, do it. Of course. Yeah. Um, and <coughs> Dacos, if you didn't have him at 897k, you could do that. Although his numbers haven't been elite. No, they definitely haven't been what they were. No. Um, but, yeah. Other names, it's probably then the value that people would be looking at. I'm going to start with Elliot Yo at 605k. 43 <sighs> break even. His uh, numbers there, 84, 94, 95. So good, obviously, for that price. Not a top six. And this is what some people like to um, do with their trades, that you're trading in someone that is going to be top of their line at this point. But we all don't have all the coin. I no. certainly don't. Especially if you are rocking with a Rory Atkins on field, he yeah. could easily become an Elliot Yo. Yeah. Or you could go Christian Salem at 659k. So he's got a break even of 67, 73, 78, 75, and then 100 in his last game. So split them. If you had to choose between those two, so where would you go? 54k difference. Yep. I'm actually going yo, despite the issues. Now, this is mainly because Salem goes to GMHBA this week. And I think they're, then they're up in Cairns the next week or the week after. Okay. So... There's just those little flags there yep. for what his scoring could be. As you know, I'm one of Yo's biggest fans. <laughs> yes. Right? Um, he would be my pick out of those two. Yeah. And I'm going to hide behind the 50-odd K that, yeah. that I gain in that. And his numbers His numbers have been, been great. Yeah. His numbers have been great. So it's just obviously trusting his body. By, oh, and same goes for Salem. Yeah, yeah. That's so fair. both yeah. come with the risk. Um, but, yeah, it, it's, it's Yo for me out of those two. 
All right, let's have a look then at some midfielders. Now, there's some big dogs coming off their buy yeah, there this is. week. So, Rory Laird, if you don't have him, I th- think he's value at 948 k He sure is. Like, that's something that you could really be looking at. Zach Merritt, would you be paying 994 for him? Bombers have a tougher run coming up. They do. They've had their fun yeah. because uh, leading into their buy was juicy as. I don't think I would be paying that for him. Mm. That's a million dollars for a guy with a hard run coming. Yeah, it's and a no. can cop a tag, I guess, as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, bit like as simple as that is, you're going Laird over Merritt. For the same price as Merritt, would you go? Would you be happier going Clayton Oliver? See, I think I would be more Oliver over Merritt. Yeah. So we got to just got to remember at the start of the year what Oliver was doing. And when he was doing those things, everyone was just Oliver crazy. And Merritt yeah. wasn't even spoken about. Mm. So there's no reason why Oliver can't get back to what he was doing. As we said, Merritt's got a tougher run. Uh, Tom Mitchell's an interesting one there. Yeah. He's gone 112, 124 and 121 in his last three. He's got an 83 break even at 875. So he's under that 900K figure. Mm. Could be the value option, but are we still looking at other value options before him? I think you might nearly put a line through um, Neil because he just got to his ton, but they've got a nice run coming up as well. They do. You were big on Crouch being ahead of Neil last week. Yes. I'm a big Crouch man. And you're with that still? 100% I am. Especially if uh, there is that lack of injury for Oh, but it it doesn't matter. Like, this is a guy, he was up around the the high 900s earlier in the year with with just form everywhere. Like, he was elite. And now he's starting to do it again. He dropped right off for whatever reason. Three tons in a row now for him. Yep. I, I, I'm all over him. So the other, I guess, midfielders that you might be looking at coming off those previous buys where we've talked, Neil, got Crouch, any Saints here. Luke Parker. Yeah, Parker, <laughs> Mills. Yep. You and do that. you still got your options there of Andy Bray and Caleb Sarong. Yep. Who both tunned up. They both did. Um, although you're saying that the Giants were hard on the scale of hardness. They That's are. another bone I've got to pick with you. Oh, go for it. Half time, the scale, it's never wrong. And it saw that Brayshaw and Sarong were tracking well below 100 points yep. for the game. They were really bad. Yeah. And the scale's never wrong. Then you've gone and you've said it was a rocket. Yeah, it was. So I, this is what I don't understand about you. <laughs> you bang on about how you're so right about things. Yep, and I am. And then you think that it doesn't happen. Oh, no, it was a rocket. Okay. Sometimes I, I don't, I can't control the power that my words have. Okay. <laughs> and in this instance, I did not for the life of me think that my rocket would overpower the scale. Mm. But it did. I did not see that coming. So I sent a rocket out thinking this is, I'm going to throw it out there anyway, and it's probably not going to work because it's going against the scale. Ha! Guess what? The rocket overpowered the scale, and they both came home like freight trains. <laughs> All right, round 15, we have a very tough buy round, and the most traded in players so far... A lot of them are rookies there. Kyle Lohman, Ryan Marich, um, Jasper Fletcher's in that list as well. Windhager, you can almost call him a rookie there. But Elliot Yo's there. I think there will be a mix of premiums coming in. That'll be the thing. Yes. Yeah, we're sort of getting a little bit of cash from someone. Yep. They're doing that by trading out players that are on their buy. And there are some there's some cash there in Wardlaw, Zeeble, Chincotta, Sam Walsh is the most Fair traded enough. out premium there. And Harry Sheasel. So people are doing their thing going, well... I'm okay to do that, which I think I'm on the fence with that. At the moment, yeah, no. I'm not trading out Sheezel. I'm going to hold him because I'm tracking for 21 playing this week yeah. with holding him. So I think that's a positive. So my outs, Wardlaw, Fleeton and Johnson. So those guys there, uh, all rookies, getting in a couple of rookies, but also Ben Key. So I'm not getting a big dog premium, which is... A worry for me because I need to okay. be getting a big dog premium, but I'd have to be moving someone like a Sheasel where I've got that eye towards round 16. Yep. And that's very important that mm. my team is okay there. Cal, what are you doing with your moves? Uh, I am, see, I don't feel good about this either, but I am going to look to dump Cornelio, Ooh. Callahan, and Wardlaw, oh. but bringing in Darcy Cameron, Brad Crouch, and Lyman. Now, I've got a quick question for you, dog. How tall is Lyman? Lyman, how tall? <laughs> is he six foot? <laughs> no, he's a low man. <laughs> you are a peanut. 
All right, we're lucky to have a special guest on today's episode of the podcast. It is Mr. Tom Duday, one of our oh, yes. AFL Fantasy Ambassadors. G'day, Tom. Morning, fellas. How are we going? Good, mate. Now, you've got a little bit of time on your hands at the moment after rupturing your ACL again. How's everything going with that, mate? Yeah, unfortunately, I've uh, done, uh, done the other knee this time, which is uh, pretty stiff. But no, it's all going pretty well. I had surgery uh, last week and pretty much been couch bound for the for the past few days. So not a whole lot going on. Watching a lot of movies, um, try to play like 2K or games on the play, so that's not really me. So I've just always resorted back to the movies. Um, and then obviously, of course, looking at AFL fantasy and trying to, trying to get better at that. Have you got a little bit of work to do with your team again this year? Yeah, yeah. It's this time of the year when I, I feel like I just continuously crumble. Um, I had a few a few weeks there where I brought in, uh, I think I brought in like Callum Mills, he got injured. Mm. I brought in, oh, was it Bailey Smith or like Clayton or someone and they got injured and I just sort of had back-to-back put back, put downs and I was just like, I, can't, I don't know if I can keep doing this. And then <laughs> I think last week I captained Bailey Smith just for something different that didn't work well and it's just, no, nah, it's just not going well. It is very frustrating. It's been the year four this year. Your Crow boys, though, there's a couple there that we're pretty keen on. Rory Laird's starting to get it going now after a little bit of a slower start to the season. You see your locked-in captain then now that uh, your boys are off the bye? Yeah, slow, slow start for Laird. He still involves 30 touches and a goal. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, he's, uh, yeah, he's been captain. I put it on him early this week, so I, uh, I made the mistake last week of uh, trying to get a bit cute with the captaincy, and I reckon this week I'll just stick with Lady. Um, I'll do the loophole thingy on someone else, but uh, yeah, I reckon Lady just just get me going. Just give me a nice little one twenty, one thirty, bump me up the ranks a little bit. I'll take that. You've got uh, Calvin's captains at your disposal anytime you need it, mate. So I'm in a bit of ripping form at the moment. Now, can you talk yeah, to us? Sorry, about... mate. Yeah. I didn't listen last week and it killed me. So mate, no I'm one's listening. Listen. No one's listening at the moment. And all <laughs> I'm getting is criticism here. So anyway. <laughs> Can we talk about Ben Keys because he's had a bit of uh, increased midfield time in the last three weeks and his scores are massive. So he's going about 110, 115 in the last three. Is that role going to stay? Yeah, it's an interesting one because I feel like obviously not having been around the club last week or in the mids for the season, it's one of those ones where it's sort of a little bit surprising to me as well when he, when he is in there. I'm like, oh, Keyes is playing a bit more midfield role, but he's someone who I think we use him where we where we need him game dependent. So I'm not sure exactly how that's going forward. But when he's been in the midfield this year, he's been pretty good. So I'd imagine there'd be there'd be minutes there. I just can't guarantee that it's going to be uh, centre bounces and and more time midfield than forward. But when he's been in there, he's been good. So I'd imagine there's probably a world where he spends more time in there going forward. Is that enough for you, dog? Wow. Is that enough for you? Maybe not. He sort of beat around the bush a bit there, didn't he? <laughs> I wish I could tell you more, but as a defender, you, you just don't. You don't stuff with that stuff. They're, they're too know. far <laughs> up the ground away from you. <laughs> yeah. Go away. Just focus on spoiling and then get your bloke done. <laughs> now, one of the fun parts of AFL Fantasy is playing AFL Fantasy Draft. And you can still join up to that now. You could even start a draft now to get involved with that at fantasy.afl.com.au. Grab your mates and a bit of a mid-season draft might be a good thing to get through these buy rounds. So, now, Tom, you love your movies. And we thought, let's do a draft. But instead of fantasy, oh, instead of footy, Let's talk about some movies. Does that sound all right with you? Perfect. Perfect. Good are are you a bit of a movie buff, Tom? Yeah, I am a self-proclaimed movie buff, which is one of the most um, floggy things you can say. But I, uh, I watch a lot of movies. I, uh, I love to analyse movies. And I, don't, I reckon there's a lot more to it than just a, a camera and actors. So I, I, I studied at school and I like, to, uh, I like to look a bit deeper, which I know sounds a bit, bit silly, but... Um, Especially when you've had a bit, got a bit of time on your hands, it's something that you can do. It's very, very fun to me. I think well, we're out of our league here, dog. We probably will be. Um, <laughs> now, what, what has been some of your favourites of uh, the last couple of years? Yeah, so this is, are you trying to bait me in here? Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to answer that question. Yeah, that's a good call. Try and steal a few. Oh, I was going to steal a few. No, right, right here, yeah, this uh, draft. The, um, yeah, oh. yeah. Let's let's get in the let's draft. Let's get the draft. I'll, I'll discuss that after. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Okay, so what I've decided, a bit like. <laughs> AFL, we have positions. So I've decided we'll have three positions for this. Okay. We'll go with be- a movie that's won Best Picture. Okay. That's like a really good one, Calvin. Yeah, you know I'm way out of my depth here. Yep. <laughs> Academy Awards. Yep. I've got a list for you so you can yep. pick some there. Um, and then we'll go a Pixar movie. Or sorry, two Pixar movies. So I love Pixar movies, yep. Yep. And then very, very good. a movie that's either a franchise or has to have a sequel at least or even a prequel. So like, for example, so... 
you need two of each, a best two best pitches, two Pixar, and two sequels. Okay. So that's where we are going, um, picking a, a movie marathon even. Okay. Six movies each we're going to have, and see so who's going to have this. We're going to put it to social media afterwards and see what people can vote. They can vote. Which one would you like? So you're going to put this out on Twitter for their opinion. Yeah. Right. So that's that might going to go well, be part of your strategy as well. Like if, I know Tom's <laughs> yeah, a movie that's buff. That's what I'm struggling with. That's because what I'm struggling with, though. Bit of popular opinion in this as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So right. Right. that's a that's a bit of a part of it. So all right, this is how it's going to work then. I've already done the uh, the draft order. Okay. And this is how it came out. Oh, Tom, you've got pick one. <laughs> of course. Okay. <laughs> all pick right. One. So where are you going? Which uh, which position or which type of movie? All right, I'm going to take what I think is the best movie ever made. And I think I can get some of my other favourites later down the line. So I'm going to take The Godfather Part 2 Ooh. in sequels. Ah, right. Yes, good. Because that would be a dual position. Godfather, did that win a be. best picture? They yeah, both did. Yep. Right. Godfather mm. 2. So, but I'm going to take it in sequels. I'm going to save best picture for later. So, Calvin, okay. you get a... Uh, Am I get next? Next pick. Because okay. well done. You've got, you've got drawn out in this really... Um, professional look I can't Con Air did that make a best picture there Tom <laughs> no and thankfully doesn't have a sequel either <laughs> studies I, I would like to see the Pixar remake of that <laughs> put the bunny back in the box right. that's one of the greatest movies of all time okay right where you going V8 uh, I am going to go I just think the sequels by the look of it could be a little slim so I'm going to go with Oh, it's, I really don't know. I'm going to go Back to the Future. Oh, see, that's my, that's one of my favourite of all time. There you go. And I reckon it would actually get a... Um, it's going to get a lot of traction on Twitter too, that one, I reckon. People will be like, yeah, oh, yeah, cow, good one, good one. to the audience. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it's part of the game. Yeah. All right, dog, right. next one up. Oh, rightio. I am going to... Yeah. See, I'll go back to back now as well because we're going snake draft. I yeah, of course. Have, snake. Should have announced Crucial. that before. Yeah. Uh, but I will... Jeez, it looks like our um, our franchises or our sequels might be might be tough. Yeah. I, I've, do you know, I'm going to go one that I've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I reckon people will like this. I've never watched Lord of the Rings. Oh, and wow. I'm going to whack that in there. Yeah. That's actually elite. I actually love Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I've never seen Which one? Uh, all of them. See, that's dual position as well because I think um, uh, one of them, the King one, is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah I get them muddled up. Yep. Return of the King. I was going to say the Fellowship of the King, but that's the ring, isn't it? See, I haven't watched this. <laughs> yep. um, but that's your position. But that, I'll get that in the franchise. Right, yeah, and I'll go back to back there. And I might just get another audience one. And I'm going to go a best picture. And I'm just going to go with Forrest Gump. Mm. Yeah. Straight bat dog. Pretty, Pretty yep. boring dog. He always does this. That's all right. All right, Cal, yeah. you're back on. Conservative, conservative. Okay. I'm going to do one dog that's not on the list that I've come up with myself. Right, and it's not Con Air. <laughs> and I like these movies, and okay. I think once again, oh, so you go franchise? I, uh, nah, yeah, oh, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, um, I'm going. No, nah, I'm not going to. Oh, it's not. No, I'm not. I'm just going to go straight to the big dog. I'm going to go with Gladiator. Yeah, it's a good call. Yeah, good pick. That that good is, pick. is actually one of my. That is the favorite movie of all time. Is it? Yeah, I love Gladiator. Interesting. All right, Tom, you've got back-to-back picks here. What movie type are you going to go for? Yeah, very nervous here. I just don't know how, how much do I go towards the audience after some of your picks. I've got a couple <laughs> of weird ones in there that yeah. I was thinking. But yeah. It's going on Twitter, I'm, so I'm gonna, I wouldn't be too weird. <laughs> yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with a, a crowd favourite across the board, and it appeals to both generations. I'm going to stick in sequels as well. I'm going to go back-to-back sequels. We're really loading up in that category. I'm going to go with The Dark Knight. Ah, yep. I like that. Yep. Feel like that's something that everyone enjoys, whether it's, you're older or younger, and it's, yep. it's rewatchable. It's just classic, one of the great. You've completed your um, franchise sequel section, so you've got Pixar and Best Pictures. You got four of those. Pick which one are you going to go for on this uh, round? I'm going to go a bit of a. Do I go a bit different? I'm a bit concerned of how different I'm going to go here, but I'm going to take Best Picture winners, mm-hmm. and I hope you two have seen this because if not, you. Yeah, of homework for after this. We're going to take No Country for Old Men. That's a great movie. Like the Coen Brothers. Yep. Never seen it. Have You'd like it, actually. <laughs> would I really? Yeah. Is you it, would. Is it easy to understand? <laughs> <laughs> Extremely. Right, well, good. It's right no, up my... It's good. No, that is a ripper. Right, Cal, you're back in. 
So you've got you've taken a best picture in Gladiator and yeah. you're back to the future. I'm hitting up the Pixar's now, dog. Right. Hey, yeah. I, yeah, I'm gonna go straight to the Pixar. Love Pixar's. I'm gonna go with Toy Story. Ah, right. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You, you sh- right, you sure? I'm very sure. Okay. And you want that in Pixar? Yes. Okay. Toy Story One. Just going with the first one. It's a bit boring, isn't it? Yeah, and oh geez, I was eyeing that off for a dual position action to ch- get that in the franchise. Actually, well, I thought oh, that might have been smarter. No, yeah. you can't do it now. I can. No, you can't. Oh no, you're off the clock because I'm now on the clock. All right, go for it. That was a bad call, cow. Because I reckon it would have been harder to fill a sequel position. That's no, I've already got one in the back pocket, mate. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Warn dogs. <laughs> we'll go with. I will pull out again a movie I haven't watched for sequels. I've not watched any Star Wars before. That might get some more <laughs> fan votes. That's, Unbelievable. Yeah. I just haven't... I don't know. I'm not much into fantasy. You know... <laughs> <laughs> um, we saw a fantasy. I, I sat down once to watch the Star Wars. Remember, we, we were in with our mate Paul there, Roy's yep. brother, and he said, look, you've got to watch Star Wars. So yep. he goes, I'm going to sit you down. I'm going to start you where you need to start. I reckon I lasted 15 minutes and I was out. Mm. Like... Are we can we put a disclaimer with when these results are posted with a little asterisk that says has not watched this yeah, movie yeah, probably. <laughs> just for fraudulent purposes. Just uh just which a, Star Wars. Uh, which one? Well it's in the franchise, so uh, is there one called A New Hope? I've heard of that. That's right, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah take I that. I think one. so. Blink have got a song about that. There, there you go. go. Yeah. All right. Um right, play on. Let's go. I'm going to go a best picture and finish this off here. And this time, not... Oh, yeah, no, I had two here that I might like to go with. But I think I'm actually going to go with one that I like a lot. American Beauty. Ooh. Probably wouldn't have gone off. I could have um, held that one, but... Yeah, that's a bit like my... Yeah, well, it is, yeah. It's a bit like my Toy Story pick very early on that one, I reckon. Yeah. All right, mm. Cal, you're back on. Where are you going to go? You've just you've gone one from each position so far. You've got Back to the Future, Gladiator, and Toy Story. Yeah, not deliberately. Um, I am going to go with a. I think I'm going to hold that right. I think I need to go into the big dogs. Yes, and Con Air isn't there. No, it's not. Uh, give me. <laughs> I was going to say Titanic, but I've never watched no, Titanic. No, you Did you watched... know that? I've never watched Titanic. What, you're picking Titanic? No, no, I've just never watched it. Uh, you can oh. give me, dog. I'm going to go with Braveheart. Braveheart, yeah, that's a good pick. Mm. Yeah. Gladiator and um, Braveheart. That's, that's one that you go, I really enjoy that, but I reckon I've only watched it the once. A what? Yeah. Yeah, I think that one's quite overrated, to be honest. Oh, Tom! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to I'm just gonna jump on that early and just say I, that's a hot take, but I, I just don't think it's that You've good. had too many painkillers, mate. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, the endos just started kicking in. To be <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> All right, I Tom. think uh, it's also one of the most historically inaccurate movies. Apparently, too. Oh. It's, apparently, it's like completely false. Like everything that happened, they just they Mel Gibson was just like, you know what? I just want to make a good movie. So whatever actually happened in real life, I'm just going to discount that. Uh, it uh, yeah, wrong. look, as a teacher of grade nine history, Tom, I can tell you that <laughs> it is 100 percent true. Right? Was it Moving really on. William Wallace? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> uh, right, let's go, uh, Tom. You've got back-to-back picks oh, yeah, here. Back to back, this is huge. Um, I'm going to go in Pixar. I, I can get one of my favourites later on, I reckon. So I'm going to go with Pixar. I'm going to go with uh, Monsters, Inc. Yeah, good. Yeah, I think that... I've, I've got sort of other favourites, but I think that's a nice nice little crowd pleaser. So that could um, that could have been a franchise then, one as well if you wanted. Oh, true. But yeah, I don't really... But you've yeah, you've already nailed your two cool. franchises. So. Yeah. yeah, I've already nailed the franchise. I'm happy with where they're at. Um, and then this picture, I could either go back to the well of... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go in best picture. Actually, no, mm, no, nah, nah, nah. We'll wait on that. Okay. We'll go with, in, in Pixar, we'll go with Inside Out. Ah, right. Now, I have watched this one. Have you watched that, Cow? You've got no. a small human. No, I do have small humans at home, um, but I never watched it, no. How much it? No, classic. Yeah, I, I was deciding between that and uh, either Wally and, you know, some of the other ones, but I thought... I'll get it out there, and if people look at it and then go, I need to watch that movie because Tom picked it, then I think I've done my job. So, <laughs> Good. Right, what are you going with, V8? Uh, right, I'm going with a franchise. Okay. Well. And this is a movie that gets pumped out. See, this is bad strategy by you. No, no. I've got two Pixars to pick still. 
Don't care. No one else says, like, you can get whatever franchise who, you want. Who goes into a movie draft <laughs> with a strategy? <laughs> well, <mate>? Right. <laughs> franchise. Yeah, who would do that? <laughs> Someone not on the list. Someone not on the list here. I am going Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Yes. Yeah, okay. Wow. They are they are top draw movies. Again, I've never watched those. What? Yeah, I wow. know. This is, an, this is unbelievable. You're just, a complete moron. Have you read the books? No. <laughs> what do you reckon? <laughs> no chance. <laughs> no, I've never... Yeah, I don't know. I'm just in this weird generation. Like you're older than me. So here I am thinking that we're, we're, we're. I thought we were picking just a sequel, and we're taking a whole a whole series. And you've got the entire Harry Potter series. Is that what you're saying? Pretty much, yeah. Which one would you pick? That's out unbelievable of? pick. Which was the best? Uh, once again, I get confused with which one's what. But the original um, one. They're all Colossal good. Stein and all that. They're all good. Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> 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 all right, dog. You're all up. right. I've got to go, and I go my back to back Pixar. So. Uh, it doesn't really matter which order, but I'm going to go up. That is an absolute ripper. That's one of my absolute okay. favourite movies. Um, and then, oh, see, this could have been, oh, geez, which one do I go between these now? Um, which one would you pick? Out? No, I'm going to go with Cars. Oh. Yeah, you. I would have gone that one. Cars, yeah. yeah. I would have gone that. That's a good fun movie. Well, they're all fun it's movies. Straight down the barrel. It straight is. down the barrel. You, yeah. Uh, you can round me out then, dog, with my last pick, which will be in the Pixar, and that will be the, uh, probably the other one you were looking at. Yeah. Maybe was Finding Nemo. Yep, that makes sense. That's a good. That's good. <laughs> that could have been a um, well, good Australian one. Yeah, it's a classic because they go down the Great Barrier Reef. Got a, geez, I've got a list there. Yeah, they're actually not a bad uh, no. little movie list. And Tom, you better yeah, finish I'm, yours off with I'm your worried. best picture. I'm worried. I'm not happy with my draft. Can we go again? Can we restart? <laughs> Well, considering I'm not going to win this, I think I think I haven't pandered to the audience well enough, so I don't think I'm going to win it anyway. I'm going to take in Best Picture. It won it a couple of years ago in quite controversial fashion um, in terms of the fact that it wasn't projected to win, but it's my favourite movie of the last probably decade, um, and it's actually a Korean movie. I'm going to take Parasite. Ah, oh, yes. I haven't seen yeah, that either. So that is, I can imagine that's not going to get picked. Like, so I've only got many votes. But it's going to be in there, and I'm going to look like a smarter movie guru than you do. <laughs> well, that's it. You, you're probably the audience that you're looking for with yours are the the people that go, "Oh, I like movies. I'm not just a little <laughs> nuffy that well, turns on." Whereas uh, the other guys are looking at just Con Air and they see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm looking at Tom's two best picture there: um, No Country for Old Men and Paris. I've never seen them. Mm. So guess what? Tonight, yeah. Tom has it. Is going to educate me, and I'm going to go home mm. and put it on. There we go. Yeah. All right, let's have a look at our list then. So Tom has his best pictures, No Country for Old Men and Parasite. The Pixar movies are Monsters, Inc. and Inside Out. That's a good back-to-back -back combo there. And of the franchises, Godfather, well, Godfather 2 specifically, and The Dark Knight. They, at, that is Tom's list. Calvin, Gladiator and Braveheart, Toy Story and Finding Nemo, Back to the Future and Harry Potter. Actually, that looks pretty bloody good. It's pretty straight back, dog. That's good. Yeah. As is mine. Forrest Gump. That's the one that I hope that gets me the votes as well. Uh, American Beauty. I could have been a bit smarter with that because there's a couple left on the board there. Titanic, we could have gone with. That could have been a good audience yep. pick. Nah. No, it, it wouldn't have been. Um, yeah. Rock, Slumdog Millionaire is another one yeah. that I did like. Rocky, Rocky was left on the on the table as well. Yeah, that could have been a dual position cool. one. Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, yeah. That would have been. Silence of the Lambs was on my list. Yeah. That was next up. That was there. Um, so, Forrest Gump, American Beauty, Up and Cars. That's a pretty good back-to-back -back, uh, little Pixar combo there. And Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, two franchises that I've never watched a second of. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully think, the audience I think it's likes unbelievable. It. I feel like I've, uh, I went in with an idea of just picking a single sequel. So, if you pick The Godfather ah, 2, right, yeah. yeah. That you don't get Godfather 3. So I feel like I've been misled here, which is yep. strategy by you two in order to yeah. get a leg up and get, you know, Harry Potter and stuff. But in the end, I get the Godfather trilogy and the Dark Knight trilogy. So that that's means I get the, the Batman Begins and Dark Knight Rides. So but I'll, that's, I'll, how, I'll it. that's how it rolls, Tom. Bad luck, mate. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's like my fantasy season. Just, it's just not going well. You've it, definitely... it started off well and then it's just going downhill. You've definitely got the thinking person's list there for uh, the the movie draft so thanks Tom we'll put this out on social we'll see how it goes good luck with your recovery and probably even better luck with your fantasy team which probably needs a bit more work than the knee at the moment thank you fellas yeah definitely needs a lot I, uh, I appreciate the the uh, kind words but I'll uh, I'll be hitting you up in the, the near future for some advice because especially on the captaincy front Calvin because yeah. it's been a been a bad couple of weeks and I need to get back on the wall I've got you back mate I've got you <laughs> thanks mate <laughs> thanks fellas <laughs> 
Got a question for the traders? Tweet the boys at AFL Fantasy or head to facebook.com forward slash AFL Fantasy official. All right, we can be hitting up lots of social media places for our questions. Twitter is a good place for that, but also our new account. Oh. Instagram account, Kevin. Oh, yeah, of course. You don't use Instagram, though, do you? No, I've, I've got to just limit my social media usage at some time, dog. People would love to see your photos. I don't think they would. No, they wouldn't. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> what would they be? What would you actually post on uh, your Instagram account? I don't know. Photos of me at the gym. Would you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People want to see. Would you set that up? Photos that You'd with... probably do like a time lapse of you. Photos doing of me. Some reps. With my shirt off. All that sort of stuff. Actually, people would love that. Yeah, I'll set it up tonight. Only fans. Yep. All right. <laughs> Let's get into some questions here. Uh, Tim wants to know, uh, well, says, seeing as our seasons are all cooked ranking-wise, I want each of you to throw one name out there currently averages less than 80 who will go 90-plus for the rest of the season. <sighs> Bang. Anything less than 80. Got mine already. Yep. Uh, Himmelberg. Himmelberg. Yep. So 95. That's a big one. 95. Jeez, it's a lot. He's well under... That uh, benchmark of the average, though, I, I think, yeah, I, I think he's going to be fine. I think he's a guy that we can definitely be looking to to bring in. And you uh, got throw Mills in there as well, who's averaging eighty two for the year. Oh, he is. Yeah. Yep. So there's another guy you can put in the list. I was looking at my team just to try to find someone find that I could name. give a little bit of um, love to that could average over ninety five. That is under eighty at the moment. There's a lot of players under eighty. But none that I would say that could be 95. I well, want Andy McGrath, now that I've had to hold him. Have you still Andy. got Andy? Well, yeah, even, a, even a Ben Keys, it's an average of 76. So there's another if guy. the role is there. What did you think, though, Tommy Duda? As I said, he beat around the bush, didn't he? I, I feel like I feel like it might be the Cameron, Darcy Cameron for me instead of Keys after Something's, that he did. He had the opportunity so, to sell it. Yep. But don't give me this, oh, I'm not in the midfield group. I've got to hang out with the backs. <laughs> yep. All that sort of stuff. No, he didn't sell it. Mm. I'm worried about that. Yeah. I, I think I'm definitely a Darcy Cameron more than I am a Ben Keys. Mm. There you go. Regan, who is travelling very well this year, it's dominating. It. Um, five of the six starting forwards are out, along with Green and Doherty. Should I just have a drinking weekend and log back in Monday? Well, that would be Calvin's advice. 100%. It'd be what, much more fun. What are you doing there, though? Jeez. Are you going to pull the pin on a premium? Out. Yeah, you can. You think, definitely can. One thing about Regan's side, because he is ranked so high. Yes. Um, he's very much hat contention. Probably Toyota Hilux contention as well. But you've got a better team. So you're probably in a position where we are starting to sideways trade premiums. I, I think he, in a, if I was up the top of the leaderboard, mm-hmm. like I'm approaching, getting closer and closer each week, you've got to be aggressive with it. Yeah. You just can't play straight bats because the other guys is, are moving. Though, so if you've got five or six forwards out this week, yeah, who are you getting in? Like it's something we don't love. Yeah, I know. I know, that, that's the problem. But that's why I think a Darcy Cameron's a good yeah. play. So you you, might... You're making money on that. Well, and you're I, Cornelio down to here. But I, I, I don't like that because I think Cornelio will average more throughout the, the course of the year. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's still... Cornelio's going over 100. Mm. That's what he's averaging at the moment. So I don't like the trade, but it gives me an extra player this week and it gives me a bit of cash to do other things. Miller time. Is it time for McRae to go? If I cut him, I can afford pretty much anyone. And do you go Merritt? <sighs> go Oliver over Merritt. Is That's probably our advice there. But he's frustrated with Can his... McRae go? McRae obviously was coming off great games and then had an 80, wasn't it? 83. He's had one bad game. Yeah. <clears throat> Before that, 129. Obviously got forward status too. 109, 123, 117. Mm. He's been great. One blemish in his last five. But he's got the bye. But he's got the bye. So... Yes, he can go. Mm. My my advice this week, dog, would be basically anyone on their buy. If you need numbers, then that they can go. Yeah, you need to get your. As long as you're getting players. someone that you think is probably going to be better or better value. Yes, which is your keys, your 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 Camerons, those guys. So you could so you could argue to yourself. I yep. don't know what that's called an argument to yourself, but you could say that keys could nearly average the same as what. Um, McRae does from here on. You could. 
There's no I don't reason. I think it's going to happen. No, but there's no reason why it couldn't. Yeah, there is. Keys doesn't play midfield. Okay, got me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> that is no reason. Thanks, Tom Duda. Probably more. <laughs> <up there. laughs> mm. Yeah, but once once again, which is why I feel safer with a Darcy Cameron. Mm. David, need to dump two of Callahan, Wardlaw, and Sheasel. Which one survives? See, it's Sheasel for me because I think you can get Callahan to a midfielder. Yeah, that you want. Agree. So you don't like you. You're actually just a little bit salty, cow. On what? Because people still have Sheasel, um, and he's good. You, mate, you're you negative about him. He can't hit a ton. He can't hit a ton. Does he need to? As a defender? Uh, no, he doesn't. Yeah, I am a bit salty, to be honest. You are. <laughs> what about? Oh well, you might have been um, not so much with Zebul, especially when Aaron Hall was out. Zebul had a poor score. Why was he on the bench so much yesterday? I don't know. There's Second something hour. going on there. Yep. The boy will do him good. Keep an eye on that because there's uh, something wrong. Liam, do I hold tight with Steele or just bite the bullet and go with Clary or Merritt? Now, this is what's tough about it. Obviously, Steele well, should be playing this week. Yep. Um, and you're probably loaded in this buy round. Yep. So it's a massive luxury to do it. But if it wasn't the buys, I would be all over trading Steele. 100%. We traded in – there's some players that we traded in – to get us through this buy. Yeah. And I'm talking your Matt Rouse, your oh, Atkins, gosh, your Steels. These Bad guys, we were like, they're going to serve me well over the buy. They're the players that were dropping off. Yeah. I, on that Gold Coast game, I, I looked at Rouse and Atkins' um, score at halftime. I'm like, well, why do I even bother bringing you guys <laughs> yeah. in? I don't even need you. Yeah. They finally got going, though. But, yeah, they're not doing their job. I think we need to hold them for one more week. Get through the buy, and then you can just offload. Mm. Uh, Scooter, or Suter, sorry. Uh, Tim Toronto, set and forget captain for the rest of the year. No, it's not that simple. <laughs> it's not that simple, dog. I said it. You could just do it. I said and you'd it. you'd be averaging 125 for your captain I instead of a it. low 100. No, it's bigger than that, mate. I said last week, I don't care what you do with Toronto as long as he has a blue VC or the orange C. I don't care which one you give him. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this week, though, dog, guess what? What? Mm, he's not playing a little bit more, can't I? <laughs> I can't wait for this. Thursday night, tune in. AFL Fantasy Live on afl.com.au, the AFL Live official app. That's and wherever it. you listen to podcasts. Wherever you, you listen to podcasts. Uh, Leanne, <clears throat> she's over in Kansas. Uh Barring unexpected drops or injuries, I start this week probably with 20 playing. Holy hat! Which one goes and which one stays a little bit longer? Zebel and Sheasel. It's Zebel. Zebel goes. Especially after that on the weekend. Would you go Whitfield to Redmond? Well, you're the Bombers boy, dog. I like him. He is an option. Um, I did, hang on, where are my little notes on that? What do I say about him? No, I just wrote his price down. He's under 800k. Yeah, okay. I think he's an option. I See? There's just mouths to feed. Would you go even further down to a Himmelberg at 507? Got the buy this oh, week. Oh, shoot. Peanut. Yeah, sorry, mate. No, your product. Yeah, don't go Himmelberg this week. <laughs> no, I was talking about the Adelaide one, mate. Oh, <laughs> Elliot. Elliot. <laughs> He's real cheap. We <laughs> <laughs> should have asked Tom today about that. Hey, Tom, get back on the phone, mate. <laughs> Himmelberg. I keep hearing this Himmelberg name. Elvis yeah, Himmelberg. Himmelberg. <laughs> BC, can Yo outscore Young? That lets me bring in Dawson instead of Sinclair with another <clears> trade. <throat> okay. Does it make it worth it? So I guess you you don't have Young because I wouldn't be trading out Young to get Yo. No. But you're picking Yo instead of Young. Yes, I'd be able to do that. I'd be happy to do that to get Dawson over Sinclair. You can definitely do it. It saves you 175k. I don't, I don't not like Sinclair. Whatever that reverse negative thing was there doesn't, doesn't matter. Yep. But, um, but Dawson is just another level, though, isn't he? Is he the number one? He is Roy's number one. Yeah. Oh, now this is something for next week. I thought you oh. and I we create our own rolling twenty-two, a superior one that has criteria and oh. stats. So buys are done. And we're launching into the last nine rounds of the year because it's ten rounds to go now. Can we use Roy's music? Yeah, yeah, good. We might make it. We'll record our own version of it. Oh, I'll sing it. Yeah. <laughs> rolling, rolling, no, that's exactly what right. you've got to sing your Rolling Twenty Two song, yeah. and I'll sing mine, and then you've got to present yours. I'll present mine. Okay, done. Next week, right? Tune in for that. That's going to be armdinger. 
Great time. You imagine if I'm ever away and you guys have to do captains. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Where is Taranto Snout? Okay, this time next year we'll be having the conversation about it. Look, we have had... You cannot give it to them in their one year. It's been a long time since. He had a 114 year he did. a few years ago. And that's not enough. No. And even the 125 that he's going at... When we gave Tom Mitchell his snout, so he's the most recent snouty, or did Grundy get it after? It doesn't matter. No, Grundy got it after. I'm pretty okay. Tom Mitchell had a year of averaging 128, then he was going at 129 that next year. Yep, that's the difference. And I, yep. by it's, all means, it's a conversation. Yes, but he won't get it this year. He cannot get it this year because we've had players he's playing like a pig, though. Yeah, we've it's had players do wet. this before, like a merit. The names that we've had, yep. McRae. So he's 14 weeks now of scoring a ton every week. Yep. So that's a big tick. Massive tick. Tom Mitchell had 17. So he's, he's I'm not even going to say if he beats that this year, he gets it. But he's, no, he can't. It's got to be next year. He's playing like a pig. Yep. He's scoring like a pig. He's doing all the things he, that he needs to do. He's calling him like pig-like and all that sort of stuff. Yep. But he's just not official. You don't get official. It's not something that we just like to throw around. No. No. Impy is another option. As a pig. No. <laughs> but cow here. Oh, right. Yo or Impy. Now, I was looking a little bit uh, at Impy, and he's got a break even of 33. He's under 700K at 697, so you're spending an extra 90-odd K on Yo. 124, 118, and 97 in his last three. So good, good numbers and a good, good game for him. So, um, no. no. I'm no. still Yo. Yes, but and a hundred k. But less. it's a good shout. Yeah, I don't mind it. And he's got the form. Yeah, too right he does. Yeah, uh, but no. Uh, Brody wants to know: Is it time to go for Walsh? And we'll say yes. So thinking of either the sideways trading to Sinclair, or to go to Clary if he's back. Who would you go? Guess it depends on how poor your back six is. It, it does. And by no means is Sinclair. The goat of the back line. Like, he's not... But he's top six. He'll he's, be in my role in 22 back six. Well, oh, okay. I'll write that one down. <laughs> There's someone I can okay, beat. wait. I'm going to make a spreadsheet for it. Will you? I'm going to blow Roy's mind away. <laughs> well, send it to him when you're done. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I reckon... What I'm, ours are going to be quite similar. Oh, it's probably going to be right. That's the thing. Do, are they have to be ranked? Yes. Okay. That's part of it. You need probably a couple of names in the mix as well. Okay. I'm pretty confident. It's only against you, by the way. So, uh, Salem versus Yo. I think we said that with Yo. It's Yo. Save the coin there. Cameron versus Ben Keys. This is tough and this is tight. And after that chat with Tommy D, I'm thinking it might be right now. It is Cameron. It is Cameron over Keys. You spend that extra. Look, you know what? Bit of cash, not much. It's. It's the safer play. And the stuff with it too. I like the idea that he's got the ruck status. So yep. it's that safety there. Don't know if this comes into your trade picking as well. Safety in selection or whatever. That's a th the three S's. <laughs> so anyway, he is with a ruck status. If you've got him in the forward line, if one of your rucks goes down for a week, you can actually just play him in the ruck. So if we yep. miss Tim English for a week, we can play him in the ruck. I'm surprised English hasn't missed a game yet, yeah, to be it's honest. amazing. Um, but then if they go down big time, then you can trade that ruck out. Yeah. Say if English is out for four weeks, trade him, move Cameron in there so you're not stuffing around with the ruck trade and you're actually getting in a premium forward or midfielder or whatever position you might need to yep. do. The, um, the split for Cameron in the last few weeks hasn't affected his scoring with Cox. No, and that was probably our up. concern leading into this year because yep. he was an option at the start of the, in the preseason yep. for us, but he got injured, didn't he? He that did. That's what happened, wasn't it? Earlier. So I'll I'll just have a quick look here, dog, mm -hmm. at Darcy Cameron's scale of heart. Oh my goodness! There's a lot of green there coming up for the big fella. So yeah, he should be he should be easily averaging ninety plus over the next five six weeks. Uh, would you trade out? This is for Kendall Humphrey to Darcy Cameron. Yes, you would. Yep. You never had you never had Humphrey there as. As a keeper for this long. Yeah, but doing all right. Who scores more from here Playing on? this week. Yeah. But so is Cameron, obviously. Yes, you can. Yes, you can definitely do that. Is Bond to target after his bye? Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, if you can rob He'll a He'll be bank. our top bloody eight midfielders. Where would you have him? 
in there. I don't know. I haven't run the criteria yet. Mm. You should do some conditional formatting on your spreadsheet too. I do. Excel. Love it. Good. The scale of hardness. Um, Now, how many players should you be having this week? Like any week, you need your 18, but hopefully you're getting to a 20 or so to drop off. There are a few rookies still floating through our teams, which, as we know, can drop 30s like a Wardlaw and yeah. Johnson did on the weekend. But, yeah. So how I, many do how many you reckon you've got this I, week? I will have, after trades, um, 21 that I'm pretty confident all of them are going to be playing. 21? Yeah, and I need that. Right, I reckon I'll be... I could be 19 with my 19th guy like a... Um, Ned Long or Noah Long, depending on um, which brother turns up to play. So, yeah, it's not strong. Mm. It's not strong. I'm very interested to see how... But I've been trading the last three weeks ready for this week. Yeah, yeah. And Roy's been doing the same. So I'm very interested to see how his team ends up this week because he was really, really bad. still bad. Yeah, he's got a lot of... Yeah, but I, he will be. He'll probably scrape why, eighteen. Maybe. But why he comes out all right? Because he'll end up trading premiums. Like Walsh goes for him. Yes, I, I can't see a world where he keeps Walsh. No, no, Walsh will definitely go for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he'll be getting. I that, wouldn't be surprised if he trades another winch. I don't know who that might be, but he might be aggressive like you. You're getting rid of Cornelio. Cornelio. He might do a Cornelio just to get better players. Yep. But then we're gonna. We might lose rookies. He didn't do Matt Johnson. I don't think. No. So that was a good one. Matt, like Johnson's, Matt Johnson could be out this week. Well, he's up to 430k. Yeah. So there's a bit of coin on his oh, head Oh, definitely. Well. So but I mean, with he it. doesn't have a buy. Yeah. And you realistically thought he would be there. I was counting. Him. Yeah. Oh, geez, I probably haven't got less. Mm. So he had a corky, didn't he? Yep. Okay. Uh, the beer boy Kai. Is one dog retiring now that Calvin is ranked higher? It's on the cards. I was thinking, like Selby, go out on a high. Yeah, well, you better come back next year, mate. <laughs> how do you honest? How did you sleep last night knowing that I'm actually ranked higher? Not well. Look, it's you know, not a great rank. Listen to my cricket last night. Yeah, later. yep. Rain though. Um, um, so I, I look at my ranking and go, "Geez, that's bad." But at least it's not as bad as Woody's. <laughs> <laughs> by like three hundred, by thirteen points, I think it is. Don't care, mate. Yeah, only over the whole course of the season, it's thirteen points. Points are points. We'll see what happens this week. If we were to stand... I may even go... I know your password. I could sabotage if, just if, to get in front. If we were to stand next to each other in front of a crowd and people went, who's the best fantasy player of you two this year? <laughs> it would have. I'd have to put my hand up. All right? So I'm sorry. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> uh, thoughts on Chera. Could you go there? He was really good. Yeah. Um, They've got a buy. No, you can't. But um, off his buy, maybe... If yeah. Colton are back doing what they were doing on the weekend, then definitely. Yeah. Is it time to put uh, to cut Calvin's captains? And to what? Put a perma captain on Taranto. What did he say? To cut it. Cut it? Yeah. From what? The whole... Yep. The Jeez. product doesn't need it. I'll free me up a few hours a week. I'll give you a tip. <laughs> um, <laughs> to just go Taranto. My, my top five this week averaged 131. Yeah, but your top one didn't. No, no, Average no. Very you're not little. listening to me, Doc. My top five. <laughs> you can spin it all you want. <laughs> uh, Grady's got this one. Um, Marriage or Loman? Who are you picking out of those guys? Now, that's interesting. I think Loman's got better scoring potential, but Marriage probably got better job security. I, I think he would, yes. Um, Marriage need... They're not great, though. Like He needed sausage rolls, though, to, to get that. Mm. And I couldn't imagine the Eagles kicking many sausage rolls over the next few weeks. <laughs> So I think it's Lyman. Yep. Yep. Right, Cal, this has been long. Yeah. It's way too long to sit here listening to you. And thank you for tuning in. Um, Big thanks to Tommy Duday for jumping on. Legend. You've got to put that out on socials, ain't you, to find out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty confident. Yeah, I think I'm voting for you as well. I think I'd vote for you. Uh, Thanks very much for tuning in. At least you can win something this week, Cal. Hey, check our ranking, mate. Check our ranking. All right, we'll see you on Thursday night for AFL Fantasy Live, afl.com.au, AFL Live official app, and wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks. All right, see you, legends. Bye, Calvinator. Peanut.